What's up? What's up? Welcome back, everybody. So today we are going to be starting an offer from scratch and we're going to make it as difficult as we possibly can for ourselves and show you guys that more than likely you are overthinking this entire process. So if we were to make this process as difficult as we possibly could for ourselves, what variables would need to be in place? Let's say no previous clients. You've never had a previous client. You don't have any skills whatsoever. You haven't learned anything. You don't know how to do anything. And I don't know, shit, you have zero dollars. <laughs> you don't have any money. That's probably <laughs> the best way to do it. So you have no money, you have no skills, and you have no existing clients to reach out to. That's that's pretty good for making it pretty difficult, right? Yeah, what's the budget? How much money do they have? Let's say they have like under $500. Uh, you have $500. Let's go with that. Okay, let's do that. You have $500. You've saved up. You've been working your job at Chuck E. Cheese for the past month and really trying to scrape by to escape the matrix. And so, you know, you now have $500 put together. So Daniel, where would you be looking to start if you were in said circumstances? You know, I have to pick an offer too, right? You have to pick an offer, you have okay. to start from somewhere. I I think personally, it's no, no previous, I would start a Google ads agency, not yeah. Facebook ads, maybe TikTok, but I think Google slash YouTube ads. That's that's what I would do. So one, that's the service. Google ads. Is it? Is there a specific niche that you're focusing on? Probably. Probably ecom brands. Ecom brands or SaaS. Ecom or SaaS, and you're running Google ads for them. Yeah, Google oh. slash YouTube ads because the same thing. Okay. Um, so Google ads, YouTube ads. Okay. It's quite the quite the hefty learning curve there, Mr. Mr. Fazio, though. I have to figure out how to run Google ads and YouTube ads. Uh, yeah, so for I'm gonna, yeah. So here's the game plan for which I, I would assume that you know absolutely nothing about this. So here's what I would do. I'm going to go on YouTube and I'm going to just write in the search bar and, and you're going to be doing this for like 14 straight days, including yeah. weekends. I type into to the search box, Google ads tutorial. And I'm going to watch every single video, even if they're repeating themselves, every single video in the first two pages. And then what will happen from there is you will have a bunch of questions that arise. Just write them down as you're watching the video. Don't search it up yet. Finish the first two pages of yeah. Google ads tutorial. This is probably gonna take you two days. The next day, you're gonna go search up all the questions and watch five to eight videos of each of the questions. And if you have more questions, you write those down on the piece of paper. See so, how this, this is tree branching and you're gonna do this for every single subsection. And then what happens when you're in a topic like that, all the thing, all the pieces start connecting together. So the tree branch loops back around and it all pieces together and you start to understand. Right, so all the things that you're gonna to have to, like one is gonna be like how to do conversion tracking. And then it's gonna tell you, okay, you need to put this code in the head tracker. And then the, your next question is gonna be, oh, how do I put a code in the in the header, right? right. And you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn shit like this. You're gonna watch people do it, and you're gonna watch a fucking astronomical amount of videos at 1.5x <laughs> speed. 1.5x yeah. speed, so it's oh, two thirds of the time, right? So now you're gonna you're gonna get minimally viably competent at Google Ads. Okay. So here's what I'm gonna do then. I'm gonna make because now you know a lot, and you have all these questions on Google Ads that you had. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna make Loom non-edited YouTube videos, just comp raw dogging a Loom, teaching it on YouTube, no thumbnail, fuck it, raw dog, answering all of your questions. Yeah. Bam, 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 down the line. This is gonna take you like two weeks. One, one or two videos a day for two weeks. And you have like 15, 20, 30 videos up about just how to do Google ads. You're not claiming you're an expert. You're just saying, yeah, the this is how you do it.
Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's it. That's all you're saying. This is how you do it. Now, what you're going to do, you're going to make sure what you're doing in those YouTube videos is saying, hey, if you want help running your Google ads, go over here. And you're going to build a landing page on card, C-A-R-R-D. And the reason why you're doing it on card is because it's $19 per year. Yeah. You're going to get a free Calendly account. You're going to embed the Calendly on your page. Google Meet is free. You can connect it with Google Meet. And you're going to allow people to stick. So. You're, you're going to put the link. Hey, if you need help, go to the link in the description. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're going to have... And, you're going to get calls like you are. You'll have to learn a little bit of SEO optimization on YouTube, how to get videos to rank, but you're going to get some calls. It's going to happen. Just a loom yeah. video, raw dog it. No thumbnail. Fuck it. So, so then what would you, what would you recommend as a form of outbound that they would be doing? Cause they can't just do only inbound. They should focus on outbound as well. Right? Yeah, so you're you're gonna dream one hundred this. Okay. So you're gonna so we said ecom and SaaS. Let's let's just start with one niche. Let's do ecom brands. You're gonna pick out. You're gonna just manually search this shit. Ecom brand or like product names, or if you're like scrolling on Instagram or something like that, you'll get ads for different products. Yeah. Like, Right? So if they're running Instagram ads, the probability that they would also like Google ads is pretty high. Right? Yeah. So you're going to go on their websites or you're going to use, you can use an enrichment tool like, like an email finder, just type in the domain or you can even do it on clean leads, cleanleads.com. I own that. You can go to their LinkedIn pages. You, you can look up the company on LinkedIn. You can see who the founder is. You click on their profile. If you have the Clean Leads Chrome extension, three-day free trial, $47 a month to get 1,000 emails. You click on their profile on LinkedIn. You can unlock the email address. You can message them on LinkedIn and unlock the email and send them an email. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're going to do here is you're going to have a custom womb video for every person because you're doing dream 100. You're not doing mass outreach right now. Oh, but Daniel, this, this requires work. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have to work to get money and get clients. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. So okay. what's going to happen All right. is the offer I would give this person because I have zero case studies. I'm going to tell them completely performance based. There's no retainer. And you will only pay me 10% of the gross profit. So what is what am I defining gross profit as? Revenue from ads minus the ad spend. That's it. Yeah. You set up the Google shopping, you set up the Google shopping ads for them. You do whatever the fuck other shit. Google discovery ads for them. You do retargeting as well. So retargeting is going to cook. So you're going to do this for about three months. Okay. You should get like two, three clients on this. You're working with the clients for two, three months. So like full elapsing of this is like four months. Okay. And now you have access to these Google ads managers. And now you get to make more YouTube videos of how I made an e-commerce brand 6X return on ad spend with Google shopping ads. And then, and then that goes on YouTube. Yep. And you embed it on your website. And only after you have these can you start mass outbound outreach now. So you can use listkit.io, launch offer for listkit.io right now, $79 for a thousand credits. Yeah. So well, I'm going to do that. And what am I going to do with list kit? So you're going to extract a thousand email. Ad At this point you have money, right? You okay. have, you didn't even, you had the $500 budget. You even spend the $500. You have money now, right? Yeah. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to, you're going to buy fucking 20 domains. 
You're going to warm how those bitches. How much does the domain cost? $12. Okay, so $12. So I'm yeah, going to and then, 20 And then $7.20 7 a month for G Suite on every domain. So okay. seven twenty times 20 $144 a month for G Suite. You're going to connect, okay. connect those to Smart Lead Pro. It's $99 a month. You're going to go get fucking 5,000 email addresses from ListKit. 79 times 5. Whatever that is, 3. Yeah, let's assume, let's three, just assume three, like 8. 395 or something like that. Times. Yeah, let's assume like $350 on like email addresses. Like spend $350 okay. on fucking leads. You're going to write a fucking cold email script. The, the, the leads you're scraping are companies that are similar. Like if you, if you worked with an e-com brand, you're going to do other e-com brands. So like in Listkit, you can do technology, uh, Shopify, 11 plus employees, like shit like that. Triple Location, whale. United States, person, yeah. founder, CEO, CMO, right? You're going to email these guys. What you're going to say is, hey, name, I'm reaching out because I'm, I'm, I'm for the past couple of months, I've been working with this company who's very similar to yours. I've been able to get them a six times return on ad spend on Google. And I'd love to see if I can do the same for you on a completely performance base. Let me know if that's interesting to you. I can send you, P.S., I can send you a, I can send you a walkthrough womb video of the ads manager and what I'm doing for them. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start sending out these cold emails and what's my goal with this? Like what's the KPIs that I want to hit for the 500 domains I bought? You're going to want what you should be getting because this is what's called a demand generation offer. I'm not going to get into that right now. We can later, but yeah, you should get one customer for every 1000 prospects you elapse through an entire five email follow-up sequence. That's what should happen. You should get a bare minimum of like a four to 5% response rate. If you, if you can't do that, like you're, you're probably messaging irrelevant people or you just have bad messaging or your emails aren't getting delivered. In which case you need to make sure you're warming up your emails and you're, you're using smartly. There's a bunch of other, I've used every single cold email tool on the market. You use smartly. All of the other ones suck. You use smartly. Yeah. I've never seen someone come over from some other tool, start using smart lead and, imme and not immediately get better results. It's just the best, like indisputable. Yeah. So 5,000 emails you're sending, you should get like, you you'd have to severely fuck this up to not get fifty calls. Like you'd have to you'd, you'd have to have some like really just shit. Over like, fifty calls over what time period? That would equate to you got twenty domains, five thousand people, like two months. Two months, okay. So fifty yeah. calls, twenty five calls a month, okay. Yeah. So at this point well, now, you're keeping your clients. You're getting them good results. You're getting performance fees right now. Let's at this point, you should be making like five, six, seven grand profit a month, something like that. And you're making like a couple YouTube videos along the way. So here's where you're going to do. You're going to go into the Google ads manager. You're going to make YouTube ads. You're going to make retargeting ads and retarget every person who's ever watched your YouTube videos ever and anyone who has been to your website ever. And you're just going to spend fucking $15 a day. That's it. And you're just going to fucking call. So just gradually trickle in. And then over the course of like six, eight months, you got like eight clients now, something like that, right? From here, what I would do make a Google ads info product or like intro offer. Like, Hey, if you're an e-com brand, um, I will set up your Google shopping ads 
following my framework I've used to get companies like this, 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 the six X where I was, and it's just $99 and it's like a done for you $99 thing. Yep. And I would fucking turbo ram that <laughs> with Google ads with, with YouTube ads, like turbo ram it. And you're, what you're doing is you're just collecting emails and phone numbers. Now you have an email list and you're sending updates about Google ads to the email list and other digital marketing stuff. And then over time, as you get a shit ton of emails, I'd probably make a school group. It's called like Google ads fucking matter or some bullshit yeah, like that. But hey, everyone join the free school group. Yeah. Then I'd spin up a consulting offer where it's like, hey, thousand bucks a month. You can just come to these group calls, some shit like that. Cancel whenever you want. Or like an info product, like a $600 info product or some shit like that. But the point is that you start building audience and you start owning traffic over time. As you, that's what you're, because you have cash flow and you start investing into owned traffic. That's what you're doing. You want, you want aggregators, email list, group. That's what you're trying to do. That, that is what I would do. And I fucking promise you I'd be at 100K a month in like nine months. Okay. So now we have everything put together. What, what should I do for hiring? Do I need to hire? How do I know when I need to hire? When does that make sense? Yeah, so probably around four or five clients is when you'll start. It's like a shit ton of like client work. Yeah. To which point... You, you, you need to, when you hire someone, so you're at like a baseline level of work. Let's say you're at like a seven and you're like, this, this is a lot of fucking work, like a lot of client work. You don't just hire someone who's an expert because if they're an expert, they're a shit ton of money. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So this is what, this is what people always, oh, I'll just hire VAs to do all the media. Bro. Like you're not getting a fucking, you're not getting someone who's actually good for $4 an hour. It's not happening. <laughs> oh no. So you need to make them good. You need to make them good. You can yeah. do that for $4 an hour. You can like, you have to teach them. Yeah. And you have to treat this effectively as like your first consulting client, except you're paying them. So your baseline level of seven and you go hire someone because you got to teach them how you're doing your Google ads. Your work goes up to a 10 for like a month because not only are you doing the work, you're also fucking teaching someone else to do it. So you're at a 10 now. Yeah. And then it gradually starts going down as you give them, okay, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Gradually starts going down 45, 60 days later, your workload now is at a four. So you've got that spread now because you can go up to seven. You got a, a three point basis spread now. So what do you do with that three point basis spread? It's more outreach, more content, make ads, start making fucking more videos and sales assets, right? And then your workload will go up back to a seven. Then you go back to that dude be like, hey, can you train someone to do what you're doing? We need to expand the team. Yeah. Right. So now, like, the point from to hire the second person, it doesn't go from seven to ten. Now it goes from seven to nine because that other person is picking up some stuff, and then that nine gradually goes back down to a three. Right now, you have a higher spread. Yeah. The the concept of the workload going up and down and up and down, I think it's going to hold true no matter what, where you're at. Like that's just, even if you're in that part of the process where Daniel's talking about launching the info product, like I saw that all of a sudden now you're going from managing client projects to managing client projects and your project as well. And so now your work goes from like a seven with the clients to like a 10 because you got to handle your other stuff. And so then from there, you'll get everything done and then it'll calm back down. Like, I think at a certain point, you start to realize that if things are calming back down, it means you could be doing something else. 
It means there's some other area, with, uh, regardless of what it is, in the business that you could be putting your time towards there. If you're like spending way too, unless shit, like you got yourself to a position where it's money's coming in regardless and you don't even have to do anything for it. I mean, that's awesome. But very few people are going to experience that. So that ebb and flow, that's always going to be a part of your business, no matter what. Uh, I just figured I would throw that in there because I remember experiencing that with like my business and seeing it where it's like, whoa, it's huge revenue. And then I'm like, fuck, I got to go and deliver on it. And then when you're starting to implement those systems, so you don't have these big spikes, you actually will see that you're working more during that time because you have to build the shit out. It's just like a highway system. You have to build out once it's done, it's done. And that's it. It's the hardest part of the entire process. Okay. So we have hired, we've launched an info product or running YouTube ads towards like a $99 done for you product. And then now we're kind of at a position where we're like, okay, I'm making good money from this. I'm at hundred K a month. What do I do now? Should I go and should I teach people how to build agencies like this and start a B2C biz op offer? Or should I go and do something else? Like, should I try and just max out this agency and get it to a million a month? Like, what would you recommend that person do once they hit that milestone? Personally, what I'd be doing is, is I wouldn't biz op it. I would, you make a consulting offer, but the consulting offer is teaching people how to do the Google ads. So it's just like what you would otherwise do with a done for you service is just, you just teach someone whatever the fuck kind of business they have. Like, here's how to do Google ads for it. You're not teaching people how to make a Google ads agency. It's not what you're doing. You're teaching yeah. them how to grow their business with Google ads. That's what you're doing. And it, then it, how it scales farther. It's, it works better because that's, that's vertical scaling. I like vertical scaling. Expand on that. Cause I know you've talked about that vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Yeah. So like vertical scaling is you sell the same thing in different forms at someone's different life cycle. So like, for instance, you could sell a course on how to do Google ads and that's for people who run smaller companies, econ brand SaaS, whatever you can, you can sell it to multiple niches, in which case you're kind of horizontal scaling, but smaller businesses, they buy like an intro course. The next up kind of business would buy a consulting offer. Like, Hey, you'll help me do the Google ads, like one-on-one -on -one or group. Mm -hmm. And then the next is done for you. And as you, as you get higher and higher and higher, what will happen is you will become way more picky with the kinds of clients they'll do done for you with. Yeah. Cause you'll, you'll have a pretty good understanding at this point of who are you the best at getting results for. And if there's a, some company that's pretty large comes along and they're like, yeah, we're trying to spend like a hundred thousand dollars a month on ads. And you're like, oh fuck, like I can make like 20 K a month off of performance fees from you. See what I mean? That yeah. you, you'll, you'll start exclusively working with people like that. It becomes like patience. Like I've even seen this with my own business with doing done for you services in like the copywriting world whether it be VSLs or like funnels or trying to beat someone's control. Um, one is that when the customer comes to you and you're like, ah, like, could I get you a result? Yeah. Are you the customer that I a hundred percent want to work with? Probably not. You just charge them way more. Cause then it's like, you know, if they decide to take you up on it, worst case scenario, you just made double your normal fee on it. But it's also, you just get a feel from like the customer behavior, like how they act before the sales even, before the sales conversation has really even started or has even like finished, you can tell whether or not this person's going to be a good deal or not. Like I found that the people that are asking a fuck ton of questions, like, you know, as an example, I had a client that came to me, they just found me on Twitter. Someone said, Hey, you're going to want to follow this guy on Twitter for copy stuff. She reached out to me. She has a really solid business. Like she's doing probably about 50 K a month, but Dude, like the way she was asking questions, she was like, uh, you know, I'm pretty close to making a higher decision. What would you say is your best advice for what you would do um, to split test against this homepage and sends me that. And what I found is that that type of client, 
almost always they're not going to be a good client because what they're trying to do, essentially what it is, is, hey, I want you to tell me what I should do so I can go and do it. And then I'm going to come back and say that I tried that and it didn't work, even though I only did what you said. I didn't do exactly how you said it and didn't do it the way you would do it. And so you start to get a feel for like, hey, this behavior, bad client. And so you can immediately just put them into a position where they're kind of having to chase you more and you're not really putting that much effort into the sales process. Whereas like, you know, hey, this client, really good client, asking right questions, right type of business, everything, you can prioritize those people. And so it's like, you get a feel for which clients are gonna be good and which clients are gonna be bad simply just from the way they communicate with you and how they reach out to you. It takes a minute to like see multiple instances of it but eventually you'll just see, yeah, if they're asking 50,000 questions out the gate, they're probably going to be a super fucking annoying client. And you just have to get a feel for that. So that's my recommendation there and how to find the right clients there is you'll just feel it out. Okay. So we're in a pretty good position now with our fictional offer that we've just started. And what we've stated today is kind of like a, a blueprint where anyone can get started on this and just follow this path. Why do you think most people don't do this? Because I think what you just said is a very viable solution, even in 2023, even in a world where people are saying Google ads are saturated, like I'm no, that's not true. Yeah. You, <laughs> you're just objectively wrong. Uh, <laughs> um, why do you think most people aren't even going to do this? Like you've just literally laid out a game plan, which I think is a solid game plan. Anyone can follow it, but why do you think most people won't? Yeah. It's the presence of uncertainty. So like the very important thing I said earlier was like day one, you're watching two pages two pages of yeah. video at 1.5 X speed and you have a shit ton of questions. Yeah. So what, what happens with people when they have a shit ton of questions, it's like super daunting. It's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to do. And they're like, uh, mm -hmm. it's like, just look up the question and answer them one by one by one by one. Yeah. And the thing is like what screws people up is that they, they, they have to do something for the first time. When you have to do something for the first time, there's a huge resistance to it because there's uncertainty. You don't know how it's going to work out. You've never made a YouTube video before. Maybe you've never even posted a video of yourself on the internet at all, yeah. ever. Yeah. You've never been on a sales call ever in your life. You've never built a website. You've never set up a Calendly. You don't even know how to do that. Yeah. You've never been in the Google Ads Manager. It's like you look at it. It's like, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Like This is super confusing and super daunting. Right. Yeah. It's all, it's all, it's a presence of uncertainties where it's like, it, it gets too overwhelming for a lot of people. And they're like, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. Like this, this is too much, but that's yeah. the problem because everything you want is on the tail end of you doing shit. You don't want to do like it is. Yeah, someone has to do it. It's like the business owner doesn't want to figure that out. And so the reason why they're paying for that is because someone else has figured it out for them. And then it's like, the way that you get to charge luxury prices for your services is like you've not only figured it out, but you're also really good at it because you you just have the skill level and time experience that's just required for it. That's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, then, and then like one day you're just really good at it. Like you're just really good at something, and that, that's that's the point I'm trying to make to people. It's like everybody I know, all of them, a hundred percent of them, like. People watching this right now, they fucking go on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, and they follow some X amount of people. This dude's posting this car. He's over here. He posted a screenshot of him making like $300,000 a month. Like, yeah. I hang out with these people. Like, they're in client ascension. Like, yeah. I've, I, I've hung out with them in person. Like, most of the time, they're not fucking bullshitting like that it is real they have that much money what's the commonality between people who have that much fucking money like that absurd amount of wealth all of them are capable of doing things that the standard person isn't so it's like someone comes along and it's like dude this guy has like fucking 80 clients or it's like he runs like a consulting thing he has like he has like 500 clients or some shit like that. It's like, how did he do that? It's because he's just better at marketing than you. Like, that's it. Like, he just is better than you. Yeah. And that's something you have to understand. If someone, like, if, if someone has more than you, or they're way far beyond you, they just are better than you. They are. They're doing something you're not. Yeah. It's not like they got lucky. Like, 
everyone has everyone will have some piece of luck somewhere. But it's like that's not the reason why. But they're just doing more shit than you. Like they just fucking yeah. are. And there there's no that's not even debatable. Like it just is. Yeah, I mean like I've I can just tell people from first hand experience that you definitely will have luck that hits you where it's just you were in the right place at the right time, knew the right person, that right person got hit up by the right company and they just referred you in. Like that totally happens from time to time. But the only reason why you even got to the position where you were lucky is because when you were ready for it and you were able to op, like, you know, capitalize on it. But like, even if you get lucky and you get a client, you still have to get results. That doesn't go away. Like you still have to be able to get results for people. I think it's, it's like people want to throw the lucky excuse because then there's no, Oh, that person didn't actually really have to do anything absurdly difficult. They just got lucky and they were in the right opportunity. And that's why that happened. But it's like, no, you don't see that person. They sacrificed a shit ton to get to where they're at. Like all the people you, you're thinking of that have, oh, they're posting the cars, they're making the money, they're posting everything uh, on, on their Twitter. That person at some point was sacrificing something in their life to get ahead in that area. It could have been their health. It could have been their social life. It could have been their dating life. It could have been, you know, whatever it is, but they had to sacrifice in some area. I think that's a big part of it as well. What keeps people away from wanting to do this is the sacrifice because you have to sit down and basically go back to school and figure out how to do shit, right? You can't just like figure out how to make money and that's it. There has to be some skill that you learn and then there's a service you can provide, but you know, people are still going to stay stuck no matter what. Dude, it's like you look at things like – let me give you, for instance, um, th you ever watch a Baya, Baya Hiza video on YouTube? You know that guy? He's like a dropshipping dude, but he's not He's not cringe. He's like – I really like his videos, and like I don't fuck with dropshipping at all. Yeah. But I watched a video of him one time, and it was um, taking a dropshipping store to like uh, uh, like $1,000 a day in revenue in, in, in a week or something like that. And I was like – I want to see like what he's doing with his video. Yeah. So I watched it and it was like, dude, the guy's fucking smart. And he was like, all right, so I'm doing like, I'm finding it like this. Now I have to go get a bunch of UGC ads made. So I'm going to hit up a bunch of people like, uh, okay, I got to find a group where I can find people. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I found a group. Okay, cool. Like now I'm going to hit up people in the group. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. This person sent me their videos like this, 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 this. Okay. So I got to send the product over to them. Hopefully they don't screw me out of money and they actually do the thing and they got a bunch of UGC ads. Got like 10 or some shit like that. He's like, all right, I'm going to spin these up on TikTok now. I'm going to make sure the Shopify store is all good here. And I got I make, I got a US supplier over here. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, start the TikTok ads. Bam, bam. Okay, here's the numbers. Here's the profit today. Here's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Bam, 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 bam. It was like live build out. And he completed the challenge. He got it to $1,000 a day, like profitably. And I was like, oh, like that was really entertaining. I like that. Yeah. And I got a fucking shit ton of views. And secondarily, it showed his competence. Like, oh, I know how to do all this, right? And he has a dropshipping course. Like, it's like fucking, I don't know, whatever. Fuck, maybe it's a thousand dollars or something like that. But it's like, yeah. But for to get someone to like give you a thousand dollars, you got to show you're capable of doing something, Dude, you know, and give value. Like, someone could just watch that video and just try it themselves and like definitely get results with it. Like, you could fucking do that. It's not an yeah. issue. But it's yeah. like, but people forget though, that front part, like being capable of doing it and like secondarily just doing it. Yeah. Like dudes, they want to start up from fucking like agency for like no reason. And it's like, like, so for something that they're, they've never even done before ever. And like, no, I'm not even going to do free work. I'm just going to try to get like a retainer. It's like, try to spin up an e-commerce email marketing thing. I was like, dude, have you even designed one email ever? And it's like, no, it's like, well, why would anyone fucking yeah. trust you? Anyone in yeah. any marketing, like it doesn't even fucking like, didn't, doesn't even matter. You spent like three grand on ads and booked like 50 fucking calls. It's like no guarantee. No. What does this look like? It's absolutely like, bro. Like no one is fucking buying that. No one. Yeah. Yeah, I had a I had a friend who he's transitioning from agency to wanting to go to done with you. And what he put together was a sales page and it's like a VSL, not even really like a sales letter, like landing page. And then it's a $2,000 course at the bottom. 
and he's not really posting on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or anything. He's like, oh, I'm just going to point traffic at it and, you know, I'll sell the product. And I'm trying to tell him like, hey, man, I actually don't think that's going to work all that well because these people have no idea who you are. You're not even putting them through a webinar or through any, like you just have a, a 20 minute VSL on your page and that's it. And they have no idea who you are. And when I watch through the presentation, it's not like compelling enough to even make me want to watch it or see what you're doing. It's just talking about how big your dick is and how awesome you are and all the results you've gotten. But it, it's not sharing with me why I should buy this thing at all. I think that goes like what you're saying with people starting um, agencies on models they haven't even done before. It's the same thing with people trying to transition from, hey, I offer a done with you or, or I offer a done for you service. I want to create a done with you or do it yourself service. It's like, it has to make sense. Why is someone going to buy a $2,000 course from you from cold traffic? They have no idea who the fuck you are. Like people aren't just stopping their day, seeing your YouTube ad and going, oh my God, need that getting on the landing page, watching your 30 minute VSL and going through your lander and then buying. Like that's just not the process they go through. They don't know who you are. When I tell him you need to make organic content around it, it's like, nah, <laughs> okay, like fine, figure it out. Go waste fucking five to 10 grand on ads and then come back and complain to me about it. And I'm gonna tell you that you should just listen to me from the start. But it's like, I don't know, maybe you've seen this too. It's just people are trying to skip like to step five and you haven't even done step one through four at all. Yeah. It's you, like, there's no compelling. So there's only, there's, there's, there's like three components that are going to get someone to want to interact with you. What I mean by that is like even schedule a call with you in the fucking first place or even consider giving you money. There's only yeah. three things that are going to make this happen. One is demonstration. And what you're doing in demonstration is it's display of competence and it's the giving of value. So if you have like an hour long video about here's how you do this step by step to where they could go do the shit themselves. Yep. Now you just exerted value out into the ether. You have to do that. Second is proof. Look at all of these other people I've done it for, right? But maybe you don't have that, which is okay, to which you need to be doing number one then, right? Second, third, if you don't have shit, no results, nothing, you need a guarantee. Either you work 100% on performance basis or you have a 100% money back guarantee. And it fucking astounds me, bro. How many businesses are so unwilling to do that when it's like, bro, you don't have case studies. Nobody fucking trusts you. Yeah. And you just think somehow cold traffic is going to give you money with yep. no content. You're giving no value. You have no proof. You have zero form of risk reversal and you fucking think that somebody is going to give you money. You are out of your mind. But Daniel, I have Facebook ads. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even fucking yeah. matter. So be, bro, yeah. I'm going to send 30,000 cold emails and I'll make it happen. It's like, no, you won't. That's no, you matter. fucking won't. It's not, it's, it's not fucking happening. That's so funny that you said that. I remember when I was in Los Angeles, it must have been four years ago when I was really, probably three years ago, I was doing really, really hard cold outreach. Like That's all I was doing. Now I'm at a point where like referral business is one of the main things. Then just from content, people just come to me and book calls with me. Um, and sometimes I'll shoot a cold email just because like I think I can really help the person. But I'm I'm at a, a cafe with this girl I was dating at the time, and she was you know she did ecom email stuff, and she had a meeting with another agency who was trying to outsource with her. And that person came, and I was sitting with them, and we we're talking back and forth, and I said, yeah, you know, I'm probably sending I don't know anywhere from like. 500 to 1,000 cold emails a month because I'm a very small niche. And this guy goes, yeah, we send out about 30,000 a day. And I was just <laughs> like, I, I, I remember hearing that and be like, okay, dickhead. Like, but then afterwards, now that I have more context, I guarantee you he was booking like very little calls from that. I just, I, I've yet to see someone sending 30,000 emails a day and the messaging in the niche is so specific that it just 100% gets through. 
Just because you're doing the thing, I'm running the ads, I'm sending 30,000 cold emails a day, I have a landing page, I built a sales letter or whatever, doesn't mean that people are actually landing on the page and converting. So much of what it is is like, who's the person, like how aware of, the, of you and your solution, and your competence are they when they arrive there? If they don't know who you are, the fuck are they gonna buy? But if they find out you're Robert Downey Jr. and you're awesome and you're giving away cookies and super cool shit and you're super cool, they're like, fuck yeah, I'll go to this person. But it's like, I don't know, I just think it's it's laziness and it's entitlement. It's just people that think that, oh no, I, I, I got this, don't worry. And it's just like, dude, you just listen to the people. So, that there's are too many people, bro. They they they, they get they get like a checkbox, and it's like, oh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just check the box. Yeah. And it's, there's something about like it, this works with content sometimes too, bro. It's like crazy. It's like if you if you think some thought and you post it, like there's something about like an energy that's in the tweet or in the video. Yeah. There's, it like the like the the content piece has an energy behind it. It just does. Yeah. And if it resonates with a lot of people and you get a lot of engagement, like I posted this thing the other day where it was, I went to a coffee shop and I ordered like a salmon bagel, like and they, they brought it back to me and it was like completely disassembled. I had to assemble it and I took a picture of the bagel, put it on Twitter and said, excuse me, I ordered the done for you bagel, not the done with you bagel. And <laughs> a, shit, a shit ton of people like that. I, bro, that's just, that is the first thing that came to my head though. I was, bro, sitting there I was like, crying oh. when I saw that tweet, bro. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> this is like how a lot of us think, though, as we just yeah. start to view the world from the agency and, and service perspective. And it's like our own little cult. Like, we all kind of are a part of it. Um, but yeah, like that, you could take that concept and just extrapolate it out. And if I started recording, like, what's something that a lot of people are talking about? Hey, here's why paid traffic to book a call funnels are not working as well as they used to. And then I explain literally what's going on. Someone's going to hear that and go, I had, I thought that too. And immediately now I'm like the expert because I put out their thoughts on the internet and they felt like, Oh, well, that's exactly what I was thinking. I like this person. It's that simple. It really, it's really that simple. You don't need to do yep. much more. Yeah. Well, I think this is something we could easily transition to right here is, it seems like money Twitter specifically is like a culture, right? And it has its own subculture and YouTube is its own culture and has its own subculture. Like you'll even see people saying this, like the engagement I get from YouTube is completely different than the engagement I get on like Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook. So, I mean, you've been on Twitter for a while, dude. How would you describe the subculture of Twitter? Based. It is pretty based. There's some um you know, you, you know what held me back for a while though is um i was completely anonymous for like a pretty long time bro yeah. i was like i was like anonymous until i made like fucking like like almost a million dollars yeah like, I, I i made a mill off of the cold email wizard account no one even know what it looked like huh. unless you bought cold email mastery because i put my face in there but like, yeah. i didn't publicly put it on the internet yeah so i started cold email wizard in may 2020 and i didn't post a YouTube video until August 2022, which was such a massive mistake. Yeah. It's like, that was just so stupid. Like it, it, that was, so, that, that, I cannot even describe to you how dumb of a mistake that was. Cause yeah. I, was just, I was just scared. I was like, I don't want to have my face all over the internet. And then it's like, well, fucking grow up. What do you want? Like, why were you afraid of that? What was it exactly that? Like, what was it about that that made it? It, 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 it didn't make any sense because now I do it. I'm like, okay, cool. It make more money. Like, now it's like good. the yeah. objection doesn't even fucking exist because you're just scared. It's like, oh, I don't want to get mean comments. Yeah. Then you do it and you're like, oh, okay, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Bro, people I, this all saw, the time. I saw this. I don't remember what I put. Oh, I posted about a little video of me explaining why I'm breaking my caffeine de detox. I went like a full month no caffeine and some guy responds to it and says like just actually the rudest thing he's just literally like i think he said something along the lines of like bro you don't gotta babble and say all this shit just admit you're addicted and move on and i just quoted him and i go it's always the anon accounts you will never have someone with a public profile that will actually talk shit to you like to that degree you may have someone challenge you but you'll never have that and it's like 
eventually, I think in the beginning that really affected me. Like I would see people say that, I'd be like, why does this person not like me? Like I'm just being a normal person. But eventually you realize that person's just living like a shitty existence. That's why they feel the need to just be a dickhead is because there's probably some sort of anger and resentment towards the world. And so that's how they fill that void is just by being a shithead to someone. And then if you really think about that, why the fuck should you even care at all what that person thinks? Like if a random loser who's a hundred pounds overweight and, you know, has no social life and is just overall like just losing at life came up to you and said, I think you're dumb. Are you going to give a fuck? No. But then because it's online and everyone can see it, like you create this boogeyman almost with it and it's just not it, it's not a big deal at all it, it doesn't matter who the who it is from like daniel to um you know andre to someone like even fuck soul bra like all these different people that are personality online just go look at the comments and you'll you you will always find someone that's a dickhead who's arguing with you over nothing and it's like the things they're usually arguing at is they're making fun of the way you look they're calling you dumb they're trying to take like a superiority route or they're just like, just being rude and just, yeah, but out. Just, like, it doesn't matter. It it's doesn't like, whatever. Like it doesn't matter. Like you're really, yeah. now to counteract this. Um, I was posting hella TikTok videos a while back and one of the guys just talking shit and like, bro, TikTok comments are wild. This is a wild shit. Um, now what happened though is they're saying like you don't make that much money like stop cap and yada 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 and then i just made a, another video that just showed stri stripe screenshots like here yes i do here's me refreshing yeah. the page what next yeah and then they all shut up yeah you actually do have to prove yourself though yeah you do yeah you but do. Then you'll yeah. just get like the actual like it will still happen you'll get the mentally challenged that still say stupid shit to you all the time. You actually just have to ignore it because it's like, bro, you will receive overwhelmingly more positive stuff than you will negative stuff. It's like so you, true. You, Dude, just will. You, make, you, you will definitely make friends in the process as well. Like people that are just, I fuck with you. Like I like your stuff and then just support you. What you said as well, I think once that when you upgraded your lighting setup, the comments on your posts on TikTok like did better or the ads. I don't yeah. remember which one it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got less, less shit talking when when you look more professional. Um, and now the 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 reasoning for this is very interesting. So you ever see those people who they fake? Um, they put like the red curtain behind them, and it looks like a fake Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, they yeah, like yeah. do ads like that. Yeah, so yeah. that works, but why? Yeah, because like, if you're on Joe Rogan, look, you got to be a fucking expert in something, right? Yeah. Secondarily, who who do you see? Like, if you think of, like, all the people you respect, I guess you could say, like, I don't know, like, Alex Becker, Sam Ovens, or some bullshit like that, or, or like, Russell Bronson, or whatever the fuck. You see them, they got, they look professional on camera, really nice camera, good lighting setup, and, like, people who run big businesses, like, a lot of, like, online stuff. Like, they always look, they got a nice setup, right? Professional. You're the real deal. So everyone who's the real deal has a setup that looks like that. Therefore... If you have a setup that looks like that, you must be the real deal. That's how you unconsciously think of it. In a yeah, way. Right. That's true. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. I, I do want to say this though. And I think this is an important point is that it's not about like, like you should ignore most comments, but also be aware enough to realize when what the person is saying is true. There's one specific person that comes to mind on Twitter specifically where if you read his comments, almost always it's very accurate takes of people like psychoanalyzing him and talking shit kind of about him. And I'll read them. I'm like, dog, I'm sorry. That's actually so true what they're saying right there. And you, you feel bad because it's actually kind of rude. But at the same time, like you're acting like a dick or you're acting like an asshole and you're acting like some jackass behavior, whatever it is. Like, people have the right to be able to call you out just as much as you have the right to act like that on Twitter or on YouTube or whatever. And I think it's so important to realize like, is the feedback you're getting actually haters or is it people pointing out, like just actually explaining their public perception of you and multiple other people think that, but they don't say it. 
Like you have to be aware enough to understand when people actually are being serious and when they're just being dicks and that's it. Man, dude, I mean, it's not hard to kind of get a gauge from that. If you're just like, whatever, then that's that. But if you read the comment, you're like, okay, that was oddly specific, right? <laughs> like you probably should listen to what they say. Like there may be some validity to what they're saying there. But anyways, we've achieved a lot today, Daniel. We've built yeah. an offer from scratch. We've yeah, created an online personal brand. What would you say would help someone accelerate this entire process of going through what you said today? <laughs> Join Klein <laughs> Ascension. Yeah, what do you think would do that, right? Just uh, an PSA, PSA for everyone watching right now, we are turning this into an official podcast soon. So that will be on Apple Podcast. It will have its own YouTube channel, its own branding. It's be pretty dope. Yeah, what's really funny is I told Daniel, uh, like I said, hey, we should do this. And it took like a little bit of like, a little pushing, but then he was eventually like, yeah, that's a good idea. And I was hitting him out. We were talking about it. He's like, dude, I'm actually so psyched. And he was saying, but you've got to get like a professional camera set up. You've got to get a professional audio set up and a background and everything. And I was like, oh man, I can't just like run in and gun in it. Like I've been doing recently. He's like, no, we, if we're going to do this. We got to do it right. So you'll be actually able to see Nick, not in 16 different locations, <laughs> like randomly in different like coffee shops and shit. Uh, I'm going to be doing it from like a professional setup. So I'm, I'm super stoked. I mean, we're really just going to be continuing the conversations that we have here and we're just going to make money from it too. That's it's, the cool part about it. It's so yeah. simple. <laughs> I'm, I'm most excited for the client ascension ad reads. I think that's going to be really fun where we could just throw in like basically clips of me and Daniel talking about client ascension and just pitching client ascension. If you've been a part of any of the Twitter spaces, you've heard a few of these pitches. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, we're not really going to change much. I don't have any plans to change much. It's just going to be the same discussions. So based tune in, but before you tune in, join client ascension, that way it's a more special experience for you. And you understand what we're talking about and you're making money during the process. You'll, you'll create some positive neural connections that will just like be really, yeah. that will be your podcast for life. That's everything I got for today. I don't know if we want to move on to anything else. Nope. We're good. All right. Peace everybody. Peace.